So uh, this is the new episode of Simulated Reality, and we have our guest Ram Shastri, co-founder and CEO of DriveView. And you know, it is one of those uh, cab aggregator companies. In fact, I shouldn't call it cab. In fact, you can just invite the driver himself, and that's a unique uh, category of its own, Ram. So uh, you know, tell us uh, about the journey of the company over the last few years. You know how it has evolved. Okay, so <clears throat> back in 2015, um, uh, uh, the company that I had invested in, I was a uh, seed investor at a company called Taxi for Sure, got acquired by Ola in 2015. Over the, over the journey of uh, Taxi for Sure, we saw the challenges of cabs and drivers and so on, and the traffic for sure. And uh, so I thought, is there anything we can do uh, beyond, because now that we got acquired by uh, Ola, I couldn't be in the cab space. I could have to do something else. You know, I can't compete directly. So we were looking at it, and then what I realized was, you know, people have cars, and a lot of people have drivers at home, full-time drivers, and then they are, 80% of the time, they're sleeping in the car or waiting for you to go somewhere. So I thought, hey, what if I can aggregate those drivers and so that the driver that I have could be shared with 10 other, driver, uh, 10 other car owners in my neighborhood? And think of that as a sharing economy, mm. sharing a driver. And that's how the idea of drive you came about. Mm. And, uh, and then when we do the share, two things happen. One is the cost of a driver for you goes down mm. and the earnings of the driver goes up. So in that space is where we can make money. And that's how we looked at it. At the end of the day, business means you have to make money. You have to add value and you have to make money. Yeah. And, uh, and we saw this as an aha. Uh -huh. And we looked around and nobody was doing a tech-based uh, stuff that uh, we wanted to do, app-based, yeah. and uh, and that's that's how we got into this uh, drive view. Yeah. So your background is you have been you know you you are called like a veteran electronic uh, design automation. You've studied computer computer engineering. So how did you? What is what is the journey been like? You know, from there to today when you right. you are like this uh, you know big entrepreneur. So, you know, uh, just like back in the 80s, after I graduated from college uh, in Suratkal, in ITK, I went to U.S. to do my master's. And then before I know it, I was already working there and uh, got married, had kids, moved to Silicon Valley, and I was mm. living there for 25 years. And then I thought, you know, I, I got to do something back to the country where I was born, the country that was given me something. And that's how my journey the, uh, coming back to India started. Mm. And, um, you know, even in the Valley, I had started a couple of found, um, three, four companies I have founded. A couple of them were successful, a couple of them failed. And that's part yeah. of the, you know, uh, part for the course. So then I said, I have never done anything in India. And why not I come back and do that here? Hmm. And as it turned out, Bangalore was my hometown. And I was, that's where I was born. And I said, hey, what better place to come back from the Valley to the Silicon Valley of India, which is Bangalore, and do something? Yeah. And that's how I came back. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when you started those, when you worked on those startups uh, in the U.S., what are the lessons, you know, that you took away from those and which, you help, which helped you, uh, you know, become successful in India, if you could, you know, talk about that? Sure. Uh, you know, the most important thing is a team. You know, mm. you have to build a team that is able to handle, because what I call it as, you know, you are now going against the Goliath. Okay, you are just the David, a small yeah. guy. And the Goliaths have huge troops. So the only way you win against them is being smart, being, yeah, being uh, sneaky, e sneaky, effective, yeah. and so on. So that's one thing. Second thing is um, don't, get, don't get seduced by your idea or your product. you got to be make sure that you have a solid product market fit. Okay. So, uh, you know, the product has to fit to the market. Don't try to, you know, figure out. You know, I've seen a lot of companies where they come up with the product and they're trying to find a market for it. And, and, and that's where they waste a lot of money and time. And a lot of times it's not successful. So one thing we wanted to do was being very honest with ourselves and say, okay, is this something that somebody wants to do, somebody wants to use, providing an on-demand driver? If it is, what is it that makes it an interesting proposition for the consumer? And the other side, on the driver's side, is it something that the drivers want to do because they already are doing with cabs? Hmm. Why is it that's more com you know, compelling for them to you uh, come on to drive your platform. So the combination of this is very important. Yeah. 
So, but then, you know, and this market is uh, highly competitive. There are like some really big players in this market. When you uh, decided to, you know, start the company, did you see it evolving as, as, as it has or, uh, you know, because scaling uh, such a company at such a big level is not, I mean, it's an extremely difficult task. So how did you, you know, plan it out? What were yeah. the initial roadblocks? So to start, to begin with, one good thing that we had was when Taxi Fish sure got acquired by Ola, we got some key talent who were leaving Ola. And you were uh, one of the investors in Taxi yeah, Shore. Yeah. Yes, I probably knew the, all the, the key talent. And were. Ola purchased it for a whopping $200 million. That's, right. uh, that's, that's, right. that's a huge a amount. Yeah. That's a good exit for us. And we had a lot of them were didn't want to go work for Ola. And they were like, you know, I said, come and join us. I mm. said, let's go do something. So that's one thing. Very, important. very yeah. important. That's how we started very quickly. We started scaling very fast. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, the money was not an issue, right? Uh, so the, the thing was that you wanted to put your passion and do something productive to create value where value had to be created. So we'll talk about the value part of it. And um, so when we look at DriveView, uh, obviously, uh, what value do you think it really creates for users uh, in, a, in, a, in a city like Bangalore? You know, if you can talk about that. Yeah. From a, there are, we are a two-sided marketplace. On the mm. one side, you have car owners, and the other side, you have drivers. Yeah. In order for this marketplace to be successful, scalable, profitable, yeah. the value has to be created on both sides of the equation. That's something that we always thought about from day one. From a consumer perspective, a, a car owner now doesn't have to have a car, mm. uh, doesn't have to have a full-time driver, or he doesn't have to hassle with the driving through silk board traffic, just like I came just now, yeah. or anywhere in you know pretty much any other metros in the India. Is yeah, the silk bad. board is crazy. Yeah. All of all the Bangalore people know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I mentioned you know, all India knows. I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, about sure. silk board, especially so, those. Yeah. yeah, especially those in the you know. So so one thing is, you know, we all have professionals. Or car owners have professionals. They have better things to do. They are doctors. They are engineers. They are scientists. Why do they hassle with driving for an, uh, three hours in a day or four hours in a day? What if you can use that time valuably for making your phone calls or taking a nap mm. or reading a book, listening to music, as opposed to navigating the traffic? That's a value for a, a car owner. For the driver, on the other hand, we have a beautiful value. You, if you are a driver for a cab service, you have to own the cab. In our case, our drivers don't have to own the car, cab. Our drivers don't have to pay for the fuel, um, diesel or petrol. They don't have to maintain the car. They have an awesome opportunity to make good money, good, decent money. Yeah. Uh, so, do, I mean, the sharing economy, you know, uh, it has been the trend for quite a while now. Uh, uh, what, what do you think uh, is the value of a sharing economy, especially as we move ahead uh, towards 2020? Do you think that it is obviously going to further increase where people, you know, share stuff, especially like in the case of vehicles and the rise of, you know, aggregation platforms? See, the sharing, the, the basic tenet of a sharing economy is trust. Hmm. Let's take an example of Airbnb. If I want to trust somebody to come and stay in the, in the uh, rent room, there's a trust involved. It's yeah. not just making money, okay? Uh, sharing a driver is a trust issue. So, Trust is very important in order to make the sharing economy succeed and grow. How do you build trust? The trust you build is by looking at who is this person? What's his background? Can I trust this man or this woman? Right? Mm. And that is where the key is. And that's where the challenges are for all the sharing economy startups, yeah. including DriveView. Yeah. But India being you know, a young country uh, and you know, the millennials, the Generation X, the Generation Z, they're, they're very much into sharing you know, uh, because they uh, don't want to spend money on ownership and rather than they want to spend money on you know, uh, clever ways of uh, uh, owning things or sharing things. And uh, so... Do you think that is one reason why uh, you know where India can emerge as a you know big marketplace for uh, sharing for the sharing economy? Yes. Um, so what happens is the way I look at it is in a person's life mm. in their twenties they will start sharing. Mm. Yeah, hey, so I get to now rent a car for the weekend, a nice SUV which I can't afford to buy for twenty five thirty lakh, and I can rent for the weekend, spend ten twenty thousand rupees and go to Uti or something yeah. like that. That's sharing. But as they get into their 30s and 40s, what happens is 
you know, typically they get married, they have kids, then they want to own things in the sense they want a little level of permanency. What we see is that is going to happen anyway. So the sharing economy will be, survive, will be there. India has one of the highest number of uh, population under 30 years. About almost five, 600 million mm. people are under 30 years. So it's a great opportunity for India for sharing economy. And then as they move into their 30s and 40s, it's a great opportunity for ownership economy. So they do yeah. a combination. Yeah. But, you know, uh, at the same time, the market has been, uh, at the same time, there's like a lot of hype for these companies. We, we know uh, the valuations, you know, Ola, Uber, Lyft, you know, DD, all these, all these companies. Yeah. The valuations are crazy. <clears throat> but in terms of revenue, they have been a, a struggling. You know? Yes. They, have, they haven't been very profitable. What do you think is the reason for that? <laughs> if you ask me, the reason is because the investment community wanted them to grow faster. Okay. Grow at any cost. Hmm. So what they did, what they did was they had huge incentives for the cab drivers, for example, Ola or Uber or <clears throat> Lyft. And then on the other side, on the consumer, they want to bring more and more consumers onto the platform. They gave huge discounts on the, you know, hmm. for the consumers like you and me. I mean, of course, I will, I'll take a Ola or Uber to the airport at half the cost, what it cost me a year ago, but is it sustainable? Now yeah. the rubber meets the road is happening in the industry. It has to be a sustainable thing. So the prices will go up for the consumer, and the drivers will have to reduce their expectation. A driver used to make um, 80000 to 1 lakh a month. Yeah. Today he's making 20000 30000 a month. Yeah, that's, a that's a quite, quite a reduction. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in order to make it work, what... If you can, you know, touch upon the operations part of your company, how do you handle, uh, you know, such a scale? I mean, in 2019, uh, you closed, you know, over a million trips so far. So to handle that kind of scale, what are the daily operations like? What are the challenges like, if you can tell? Yeah, <clears throat> one thing we did from a get-go was we want to automate everything, use intelligence, hmm. okay? So, you know, intelligence in the sense, whatever that can be, made smarter, we don't want to hire people to do it. For example, we are doing uh, close to a lakh trip a month with less than 100 employees in the company. Hmm. Okay. Everything is automated. Whatever that can be, uh, any process can be automated. We process, automate the process at DriveView. So what does it mean? What does it mean is that our tech, tech stack is very, very strong. Our tech stack is very unique in that. So that's how we add value. Second thing is we... Uh, get intelligence from through the, through the uh, journey of the driver and the through the uh, journey of the uh, customer. So we take intelligence from the data from it and then use it to get the best value to both sides. In the sense, we will provide, <clears throat> we know that you as a consumer have used DriveView with a certain driver. We know that you like that driver, you didn't like some other driver. We'll try to match up with uh, a, something, a driver similar to that. You may not get the same driver because he's not going to be there at that time when you are. But we have intelligence in the back end. We, we, we do a lot of uh, data analysis in the back end. And then we make sure that the intelligence is there, built in there. Hmm. The third thing we do is constant supply-demand prediction. We predict supply. How much, sub, for example, in HSR layout? How many supply right now at the moment we have? Uh, how many drivers are there? And what's the demand? today, in this afternoon. And then we need more drivers because the demand somehow uh, went up because of some reason we don't know. Mm. I mean, sometimes we know, sometimes we don't know. And then we have to now make sure the supply is there so that I give you the best experience because when you look for a, a driver, you got to be able to get it. Sure. Uh, you talked about the tech stack. We basically uh, usually cover that po uh, you know, point. Uh, and so if you can talk about the specific technology solutions, specific technologies that uh, you have implemented in a little detail, yeah? Yeah. So, so fun fundamentally, the brains behind it, it sits on, a, on an Amazon server okay. out there somewhere in there, in the okay. cloud, right? And then we have the, the consumer app on mm. iOS and yes. Android and, and our driver partner app, which is in the... Uh, in usually in only in Android today. Okay. We don't need iOS for the driver partner because they are all using Android. So so we have now the data goes back and forth between obviously the location where the driver is, and then in the back end we churn all this data and figure out okay who is doing where, what is he going, where is it go, what's happening. 
So, and then we also predict how long will this customer use a driver mm. for a given uh, journey. And then we also know uh, how, how much money this driver is making and make sure that the drivers also make sufficient money so they can stay on the platform. So altogether, it is, it's the, there's a lot of stuff goes by in the background. I mean, I'm giving you a very high, L, mm-hmm. high level. But for example, we know that there are, you know, we have over 20,000 drivers on our platform today okay. across India. Uh, on any given month, five to 6,000 are active uh, in a month. So now what happens is that out of the, out of the five to 6,000, uh, about uh, roughly 30 to 40% of them are full-time drivers. So the remaining are part-time. They have another job. Maybe they are a school bus driver in the evening. They, they log in and take some bookings. Or they are a business guy, They you know, uh, and so on. So think of it as what we have is a lot of part-timers are there. So we know that we know we, we predict demand. Demands typically everybody for Uber, Ola, and DriveU is all. Friday, Saturday is a huge. Mm. Commute time is huge in the morning and the evening. So what we do now, we need to get more drivers because there is more demand. So we're trying to figure out what is the incentive that goes for the driver to come in. So we'll say, hey, I'm uh, low on um, drivers in Kormangla now. I need some drivers. They are uh, going to Whitefield. So I do on the uh, app, he automatically he'll get, okay, you take a trip now to Whitefield now, I'll give you 100 rupees more. Yeah. So we automatically have that on the driver side or the, the partner side. But on the consumer side, we don't have search pricing. It's the same price any given day. Yeah. Any, it's all set price. So there are a lot of those things we do on the pricing, on the availability of drivers, availability uh, you know, of uh, how quickly I can get. All this is done in the huge amount of back-end analysis we do. Yeah. And is there, are there other things that you're exploring, uh, some other new technologies, or you, probably are you looking to invest into uh, you know, another partner which has an innovative solution? Is there anything? Yeah, we have done more. I mean, I just give you a snippet. For example, before a trip starts, um, the driver has to take a selfie of himself. Okay. So then what happens in our back end, we look at a thing, a pattern recognition and say, hey, is this driver, uh, mm. is he wearing the uh, uniform? Or is this a guy? So when if he if by end of the trip, he hasn't worn a uniform, for example, yeah. he gets charged 50 rupees, right, uh, as a penalty. So so we have built a lot of stuff. By the way, we are the only one who provide driver service. We provide insurance for the customer, for your okay. car. So we, you know, before the trip starts, he has to take a picture of the car. All the pictures are compressed and put on the server. And at the end of the trip, he takes picture again. Now, if there is in between, there are some problem with the car or something happens, then the insurance takes care of it. Yeah. So we have built a lot of these uh, processes in the, in the system. As far as um, we are obviously looking at more and more technology to build into yeah. this. And this will, the journey continues. Yeah. So let's talk about the use cases. What kind of uh, customers, uh, you know, are interested or where do you see the demand coming from? Obviously, everyone can have a demand for this service. It's uh, great. But then what do you think uh, are the type of customers that you're targeting? So so the one obvious is commute to mm-hmm. and from work. Sure. Every day you're doing an hour and a half to two hours trip here in Bangalore, maybe two to three hours in Delhi and Mumbai. Yeah. And, uh, and then they use drive driver, right? That's one thing we use in the commute in the morning and in the evening. The second use case, what we call is actually don't drink and drive after hours. Yeah. And that's a huge demand for us. After 10 o'clock at night, I mean, across India, I mean, the, we are the only one who can provide drivers to drive you back home after a few drinks. Yeah. And, um, you know, the government of India is now getting very tough. The fines for uh, found driving drunk is now 10,000 rupees and they confiscate your car. So there is a so there's a lot of reasons for people to say, you know what, Arey Baba, I'll pay five hundred rupees and get a driver hmm. and go home yeah. safely. I mean, let alone get into accidents and you yes. know into you know trouble. The third use case is actually one of our biggest use case, what we call running errands. You know, there'll be busy housewives dropping kids off at school, uh, go for shopping, take mom to the doctors, go pick up somebody at the airport, take your favorite your dog to the vet. Um, and in general, that is actually close to half of our trips during the daytime. Um, then the last use case we have is what, is the what we call outstation travel, intercity. People have been using drivers for intercity travel because you know even though roads are getting better in India, it's still stressful to drive from here to let's say Goa or, mm. or, or Uti or somewhere, or you know so so people use the drive view driver. 
The thing that we have done even there is, by the way, if I, I mentioned about commute, yeah. I commissioned about don't drink and drive, and they are all one-way trips. Hmm. So it means he'll drop off the, and then he has to find a way back. Yeah. So what that puts a, a burden on our algorithm to find another ride for him in that area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the killer. Nobody could, could have done that. We do that right now. And we had extended that to outstation trips. I can go to Goa tomorrow, uh, take a driver. I'm just hanging on the beach. I don't need a driver hanging out for a week. So he'll go home. You know, that kind of thing. So we have that too. Yeah. Uh, you uh, made an acquisition, for example, driver's card. You've made multiple acquisitions. So what kind of value are you looking when you make such acquisitions? Uh, uh, you know, if you can touch upon that. So we did about three acquisitions in yeah. our uh, journey of our last four and a half years. Uh, primarily, the acquisition was expanding into those cities. We, di- you know, we didn't have a good footprint. Uh, yeah. They had a set of drivers. And also, we didn't talk about it. We do serve a lot of businesses or B2B clients. And they had a lot of B2B clients in that area that we could, our drivers could serve. So the value we look at is um, acquisition is based on is there a value for us on our consumer side or on the business side? So we look for that and then we do it. So, yeah. so are you also looking into the B2B space where you have enterprise clients and you know they have their own specific needs for certain things Absolutely. where they need drivers? So if you can talk about that, you know. Absolutely. So in the B2B space, the way I put it is we are a logistics partner. Okay. What we are going to do is we are moving the assets, their assets from point A to point B. Yeah. We work with Uber. We work with Ola, we work with Zoomcar, we work with Cars 34. Mm. So, you know, and they don't look you look at you like a competitor, it's more like a partnership. Exactly. Yeah? Exactly. We yeah. work the, with them as a partner and there are certain use cases that they need a driver service like us. We work with the companies like Cars 24, Car Deco. What they do is they are selling used cars. Mm. So what happens is the cars are sitting in a lot somewhere outside the city. You want to buy that some car you look up online. And the dealer, so what our driver picks up the car from the, the parking lot, brings it to the dealer, you test drive it, yeah. and then, you know, that kind of thing. So there's lots of use cases on the, on the B2B side. Yeah. Uh, and if we talk about the funding, you know, uh, obviously the company has raised about $5 million, am I, if That's I'm right? right. So right. far, are you looking to, I mean, obviously get more funding with the, with the kind of scale of operations that you have? So look, um, as a CEO, my first job is always looking for money. Right? Yeah. So that's my yeah. first job. Having said that, we are actually getting very close to profitable company. Yeah. So we, we had targeted ourselves to be profitable early 2020, and I think we will be. And, um, but uh, we are going beyond driver service. We are looking at other things which are related to car, and for that we are raising money. Uh, related to car, so what do you mean by that? So, so we want to be in the journey of from the womb to tomb of a car. Okay. So by the, from the time you buy the car, from the, to the time you sell the car, the driver want, uh, driver service can be used. Hmm. So for the buy you, you know, so what we have is a platform. We have over quarter million uh, customers on our platform using us uh, all the time. They have all cars. After a few years, four or five years, people want to sell their car. So, for example, buy the car. So we will facilitate it with our partners. Hmm. We already started service with the car detailing with uh, 3M. We, we, we will have curated partners like 3M. And now you can get, our driver can pick up the car from your home, go get the car curated by 3M, for example, and bring it back. So we reduce the hassle for you to go drop the car off and so on. And that's one thing. Look at car maintenance. You maintain a car once or twice a year, three times a year. Our, you, know, you go on our platform, we have curated partners. We will have, a, and then they will, now the driver, so driver will pick up the car from your house take it to a, you know, your car maintained and bring it back. Think of it as insurance. We already offer insurance for our customers on our trip insurance. That's like an extra layer of insurance. Extra layer yeah. of insurance. On top of it, you can even purchase insurance for your car from our platform, on our platform, motor insurance on our platform. Mm. Think of anything that goes related to car, you yeah. want to be part of it because we have built a brand. And a platform. Like, and a platform. Yeah. And customers keep coming to our platform every day. Mm. So, so, uh, I mean, obviously, platforms are powerful and very valued. Uh, do you also, are you also looking for, you know, third-party integrations, uh, you know, where 
you have your APIs and which developers can build on top. You already of it. have it. Yeah. So we, if you can talk about that, what what is so, the so what's for happening? example, I'll give you the our first integration we did with the Zoom Car. Okay. About three three and a half years ago. Hmm. So for example, you go to a Zoom Car platform and say, I want to rent a car, and they will have an option saying, Do you want the car to be dropped off and picked up? Uh, you know, and if you say yes, then automatically the API shoots and comes to drive you. And drive you will now assign a driver. Okay, here is Mr. X customer for Zoom car. He is in HSR layout. And go to his place, uh, take this car from here. He has already ordered, book this car, take it, pick it up from the lot and take it to you. Then after the trip is done, you say, I'm trip is done. Then automatically another driver, you know, API call calls in. And our, another another driver from somewhere else picks it up from you. Yeah. So that's what we do. That that that's the integration we have been doing with many partners. Yeah. So instead of let's say someone wants to just hire a driver and they don't know about Drive you, you know, what could be the hassles uh, they might face? I mean. Yeah. I mean, look. At the end of the day, what we offer is a driver who is background verified. Yeah. Uh, the driver is verified. We check his Aadhaar, we check his background, we have a police verification, okay. we check, um, we make sure he has references, mm. you know, and we do all that. Okay. And then secondly, the driver is trained on our platform. He knows how to use the app, he knows uh, the, uh, you know, how to Does behave. he know like all drive, is, he, is a driver able to drive all kinds of models or could there be some challenges there? Yes, there are some challenges there. Uh, what we have is on the platform, it depends on the type of the car that you have a certain driver is assigned to you. Okay. So if you have an SUV oh. and a driver doesn't have experience in SUV, mm. he won't even get to see the... When we broadcast for a driver, he won't even get that business. Okay. So it's very, very... You know, so when the driver is brought onto the platform, he's verified and say, okay, you can do this, this, and this, and then, yeah. and, and then only they and only those will be there. So there's a lot of uh, benefits of having a, uh, a driver through DriveView as opposed to going from a, somebody that you don't know. Sure, sure. Uh, but if you look at the competition, like if, what if like Uber, Ola, or someone like Urban Clap for that matter enter your field? I mean, obviously you have the first mover advantage, which is obviously very valuable, but then do you see them doing the same thing? Look, um, as um, Andy Moore at uh, Intel said, only the paranoid survive. Mm, okay? yeah. We are always paranoid about who will be coming in, there in our space. Yeah. So we created a space yeah. and we are, not, we are pretty sure that there will be other people. Because if we are able to make money out of it, yeah. if we are able to succeed, why not somebody else? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Of course, we, we, we partner with them. We serve Uber. We serve Ola. But we also know that at some point they may want to get into this business too. But that's fine because at the end of the day, what we are offering is something unique and we have a four-year advantage over everybody. And we are way ahead of everybody in terms of uh, um, processes, technology, operations. And why not? If mm. somebody more people want to come in, we are okay. So in what ways do you help these companies all in Uber? If you can just... Talk about yeah, that. I mean, we, we have multiple projects with them. Uh, for example, with uh, Ola, you know, Ola started as something called Ola Drive recently. Yeah. What they do is now they compete, they provide uh, rental cars for you, right? Self drive mm. cars. Our drivers actually pick up the cars uh, for the self drive cars. And at the moment, what we do is we help them take it to a place where they, they are uh, maintained, cleaned, and serviced, and bring it back. So that's one use case. Another use case is we are actually Uber users uh, to augment their driver supply. They need sometimes they need drivers, especially peak peak periods. Uh, see what happens is just like us, Uber will also have peaks, morning peaks and evening peaks. In the afternoon, mm. it's kind of lull. You know, not many people use Uber and Ola. So what if you have if I'm able to provide extra drivers for you during the daytime, early morning and in the evening? That's a use case that they can use. Yeah. And in terms of like the pricing also, uh, DriveView has very, very, uh, sometimes even more affordable uh, than these companies. So how are you able to do that? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the thing is, um, it, it, look, at the end of the day, if the driver can make sufficient income hmm. in the, on our platform, then he will stay on the platform. Yeah. So it means we are able to provide a driver. Uh, we won't give a guarantee, but he has a confidence that he'll make enough money. 
So even if we drop the price a little bit, it's okay. Yeah. So if you talk about, you know, the transportation industry in general, there's a lot of focus on sustainable transportation, you know, public transportation. And uh, there has been like, you know, campaigns across the world where people are saying don't use vehicles, you know, um, instead use public transportation. How do you see this trend going and, you know, uh, what can be the impact on drive you in that case? Look, um, yes, we know that, uh, you know, that, but there are, there, are, there are things that you have to think about, right? One is sustainable transportation is important. Mm. One of the ways drive you can offer is carpooling. You can pull, uh, if I'm going from here to Marathali and uh, I'm going by myself, mm. at some point I can actually provide a ride for you because you happen to be going in the same area. Okay, so that's, that's pulling the, you know, pulling this in a cars. We can do that. That's something that we can, we looked at it and at some point we might do it. Um, at this point, we are growing where we are today. Um, we haven't really spent much time on that. Now, another thing is, if you think about it, <clears throat> like I talked about, in partnership with Uber and Ola, and uh, you know, we can offer drivers for different use cases. So uh, sustainability is important, I think, but there is a class of people who will never take a public transport, who will probably never take a bus or the metro, mm. however great it is. And even, you know, with all the best infrastructure, uh, there are people who drive to work. So yeah. we'll always have a business for driving. And for drivers in general, uh, what, what are the incentives? Why would a driver go for DriveView or, and not go for, you know, Uber? What, what are the differences uh, when we talk about these companies yeah. and DriveView in that so, context? <clears throat> let me give you an example. For example, a typical driver, a full-time driver, if you want to hire, will cost anywhere from 12,000 to 18,000 rupees a month okay. across India. Hmm. Maybe Bangalore is probably higher, yeah. 17,000, 18,000, because the cost of living is high. Today, our drivers, if they work on our platform for 10 hours to 12 hours a day, six days a week, hmm. they make 30,000 rupees. And some of them make almost up to 60,000 rupees. Okay. So that's Great. the incentive to work at DriveView. Second thing is, if you look at compared to Uber or, or Ola, what happens is that I have a car. I have to have a car to be a Uber on the Uber platform. So it means I have EMI for the car. I have to maintain the car. I have to pay for the diesel. And all that is a cost. And what happens is, what has happened is, even though a Uber Ola driver may make 60,000 rupees, 70,000 rupees, after he pays all his costs, insurance, registration, everything, he's making about 20, 25, 30,000 rupees mm. if he's lucky. So after in investing all that money, you know, a down payment for a car and everything, he makes same or less than what drive your driver makes. Okay. So that's a value proposition for Trivia. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the expansion plans for the company, you know, uh, both in terms of geography as well as in terms of the new kind of business models that uh, Drive you can have in future. So we are in the seven largest metros in India right okay. now. So, <clears throat> and uh, we'll probably add a few more in the mm. next uh, six months. Sure. And some, some cities are obvious that we are not there today. Kolkata, for example, we are not there. We are not there in uh, Chandigarh. We are not there in uh, Jaipur at the moment. But but you have plans yes. to be there, yeah? Yes, yes, mm. yes. So that's one thing that geographically we can go. Yeah. On the expansion beyond driver service, we talked about B2B, yeah. you know, providing drivers for logistical, moving uh, assets in the, within the city or intercity. Second thing is we talked about um, other verticals that we talked about, a car owner. Or, you know, so in a way, drive your app will become you know, the, the the buzzword is super app. Yeah, like Alibaba, you like, know, they, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. they do everything. Yeah. I mean, other, the closest one we look at is Grab hmm, or Gojek yeah. in Southeast Asia. They have everything, right? You can get uh, medicines delivered to your house, you can get food delivered, you can get pick up the car, hmm. uh, everything. But yeah, Uber, for example, is also... Trying to get there. Yeah. yeah. But the reason is because you have to make money. Yeah. At the end of the day, investors will, will demand that you be profitable, you can't keep on raising money. Yeah. So everybody will do that. Ola is doing that. Ola went to Uber Eats. I mean, uh, Ola went to Eats for a while. Now they have a Ola Cloud Kitchen. Yeah. Now they have Ola self-drive cars. Mm. Ola doing electric. You know, so if we have to do this because, I mean, in case of Ola, for example, they got 200 million consumers. How do I, how do I capitalize on this? Do other things. Same thing goes to drive you in a smaller scale. We have so many... The 
think about our cus- uh, consumer, our customers are are well healed because the very fact that they own a car means they are at a different strata of the society, and they have the spending power. Yeah. So that's what we are trying to do. Yeah. So we go into other verticals. Uh, but if you look at the size and population of India, I mean, there is obviously a huge opportunity in tier two cities, tier three cities. Do you think that you can get there before others? Uh, maybe. You know, tier two, we are not. We we talk about it, yeah. but it actually, the tier two, the way I look at it is, I call sister cities. Yeah. For example, Mysore. Hmm. It's very obvious for driver to be in Mysore, but in, there is a lot of traffic between yes. Mysore and Bangalore, yes. that kind of thing. We are already there in Mumbai and Pune, for example. Hmm. In uh, NCR, we are in four big, you know, Faridabad, Gurgaon, Delhi. We are all there. So we'll start looking at sister cities where there is a no, there is a there is a normal traffic between the two. That would be the next one we'll go. Okay. So I- India is huge, and even by the way, even in the major metros, we are scratching the surface. Yeah. It's yeah. So huge, so huge. We should be doing. We can easily bring ten times the number of trips um, in a matter of years if we have the right the right scale. But if you look at how many trucks travel in India on a daily basis, you know, and obviously it's, all of this is unorganized, informal, uh, any the scale of which uh, that that is there, don't you think that could be something that companies should bank on? You know, yeah, there are a lot of already companies doing that. Okay, there are lots of companies in the truck space. You yeah. know, um, there is guys. I think there is a black buck and then there is a lot of people are there. there yeah. is, so there are a lot of companies in the trucking space. The thing is, you really need to understand your customer. Mm. And the truck drivers and a, a drive-you driver are different. Okay. A, you know, number one. Number two, a truck customer is a, like, you know, our customers are different than a truck customer. Mm. You know, trucking usually becomes a B2B play. It's a B2B yeah. play, you know. So we are... You know, look, we got the technology, but do you want to go there, play there? No. At the end of the day, in a startup, focus is very important. And we are already, we have, our market is so huge. Why go somewhere else? Yeah, yeah. And also the integration of payments. Uh, I'm sure, uh, obviously, DriveView has uh, the payments integrated. What business opportunities could you get from there, obviously? Uh, I mean, we have a... You know, we have a wallet. Yeah. To start off with, we have a drive you wallet. Yeah. Where people can put money in there. It's a closed wallet in the sense you cannot use it to buy something else. Mm. Okay. You cannot, uh, you know. So at some point, if it makes sense, we'll make it an open wallet where, you know, the money can be used, for example, to pay my electric is, bill. Is any, has any company done that? Where, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. O- Ola does that. Ola does that. Yeah. Ola does that. They have a Ola money mm. I can use to pay yeah. uh, electric bill, water bill kind of thing. You know, we Ola is big enough, and they have huge customer base. It makes sense for them. We are yeah. we are still very small compared to them, so we don't want to do that. But when you integrate a wallet into your app, what are the regulatory challenges? Challenges there is there anything yeah, yeah. Uh, that the company has to deal with? Very much. Um, RBI is very very careful. For example, it has to be, uh, you know, uh, it, it has to be Indian currency to start with. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. It cannot be a foreign currency coming in. RBI gets involved. Yeah. Uh, number one. Number two. Um, like I said, uh, if you are a closed wallet, money can be used only on our platform for our service. It yeah. can be used for somewhere else. If it's an open wallet, there are other other things come up. Um, mm. You know, other regulations are kick in, which at this scale for us, uh, it doesn't make sense. At some point, we might. But today, I mean, for example, when we integrate all these other verticals, they can through pay through your do uh, drive you platform today. You can do that actually today. We can do you know. People can, I can get my car serviced, and if it's 7,000 7, rupees, I can just pay on my platform. And I can do that. Yeah. And at some point, um, you know, it makes sense, we will do. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if you look at the other trend in transportation, it's like intelligent automation, electric vehicles. What, uh, what are drive use plans there? You know, in the intelligent automation, okay, there is a, there is a big push in the U.S., for example, yeah. about um, autonomous cars. Uh, you know, where the cars go on its own. Mm. You know, that has really hasn't panned out. And yeah. I always said, in India, it will never pan out. Yeah, it will never. Like. It's, it's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Okay. And number one, in India, we have other things, right? We have lots of labor supply. Yeah. But in the U.S., labor is not there. They don't have labor. So it makes sense to automate things when there is no labor available. Mm. Because at the end of the day, you have to pay for the capital, yeah. you know, to buy all those uh, equipment. 
So I never thought that it's going to go to go much in uh, far in India. So I'm not worried about that. Um, you know, as far as uh, the second question you yes, asked, I forgot now. Autonomous, you know, you the electric vehicle. Electric space, vehicle. Yeah. Look, electric vehicle makes sense, uh, but um, the pro- the challenges with electric vehicles have their own challenges. Yeah. Okay. First of all, where is the electricity coming from? If you're using mm. a thermal plant, a coal plant. What are you doing? <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Same thing, right? Yeah. So you are, you know, you know. So, so the question is, electric has to come from renewable energies, and then you see the value. I mean, I'm not saying you know Elon Musk is wrong. What he's doing, yeah. I mean, he's a visionary. He's looking at the next 20 years. We certainly have to take care of the, you know, the pollution we have with all the. I'm actually very pleased to know that India is pushing forward on electric buses. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, because that buses put out a lot of, uh, you know, diesel buses have, a, you know, uh, a lot of pollution. Cars have gotten cleaner, and now BS6 is coming next year. It's getting cleaner, even yeah. better. And I think, I think, you know, when people tell me, oh, India is all, all this, I said, no, India is doing a lot of progress. I, yeah. I'm actually very proud of where India is, given the constraints we have in India. Yeah. And uh, what has been the response from, you know, cons- customers, end customers? Uh, if you could just share some anecdotes, some stories, as well as, like, you know, uh, in improving the product. So, <clears throat> from end customers, people are very happy. The very fact that we continue to grow month on month, quarter on quarter, year on year, we are doubling, more than doubling once uh, in a year. Well, that's, uh, I think, investors should obviously hear Has, this. Hear that, <laughs> right? Yeah. So Maybe uh, you're undervalued. Do you think th- that uh, the company is probably undervalued? I don't know. I mean, it, it, the value is all at the, uh, in the eye of the beholder, right? Yeah, I mean, the eye of the beholder is always probably like, I think it's a lot of hypes. I mean, if you look at the, yeah. these companies, these type of companies. Yes, yes. So in, the, in that context... Look, the, you know, after the spectacular failure of WeWork, yeah, and after the the dismal thanks per- to SoftBank, they like SoftBank. Uh, and, giving away money, yeah, free and, all the time. Exactly, and uh, even today, by the way, Wag got closed. Wag dot com, uh, yeah. dog walking, you know, stupid ideas. Yeah. Um, after, so don't you think like it's kind of similar like the tech bubble of the nineties? Yes, yes, start a bubble. Yes, yes, it is. It is. It's it's good. It's good that it's it's actually the when they go to the public market, they're getting pushed back. Yeah, which means. Public is saying, wait a minute. Yeah. Show me how we're going to make money. Hmm. And, 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 you know, from day one, drive you was, we always said you have to make money. I had to run a business where I'm not here for charitable purposes. Yeah. I'm here to make money. Okay. And along the way, I want to provide value to our consumers and a great livelihood for our drivers. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at the Indian startup ecosystem, obviously it has been doing really well. A lot of money is coming in. How do you see this trend? And obviously, are you looking for a Series A funding now? Uh, we are looking for Series B, actually. Series B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we are. Um, <clears throat> um, look, Indian ecosystem has been great. India is the third largest um, country in the world where the money comes in for uh, startups, which is awesome, which, which shows that Indian entrepreneur, the talent is amazing, what yes. we have here. Okay, that's a great thing, right? The question comes up is, how do you become a sustainable company? I mean, if if companies like, I mean, there are great service, Swiggy and Zomato or Dunzo, awesome service. Yes. But they have to have a path to profitability. And how do I make it profitable so then I have to charge higher? If I charge higher, will you and me buy as much Swiggy every day as, mm. as they would do now? So the challenge for them is still ahead of them. Everybody is now, after the debacle with WeWork and mm. everything, people are now talking about profitability. Everybody talks yeah. about profitability, right? Yeah, that's it, like, it's also a hype. hype. I guess, like, yeah, it's a hype, hype, but it's a good hype, I It's guess. a good hype. You know, Zomato now just put out yesterday saying, oh, we'll be profitable in 2020. So do you think the valuation models are going to change uh, now? Yeah, I think so. Especially how the global economy is probably slowing down. You know, it's bit. very hard uh, as a crystal ball, but I, what I can tell you is that the, after the SoftBank bubble burst, People are, are looking at saying, okay, show me the money. How do you mm. make money? Which yes. is a good thing. Which yes. is a good thing. I mean, that is missing. You know, because in the long run, if you don't have that discipline, you throw the baby with the, in the, with the bathwater. Yeah. Right? So you have to be very careful. You have a good, beautiful baby. Don't throw it away because of, of a hype. Right? Yeah. Focus on value that you add. And suddenly, for a while, we lost that value. Right? Yeah. Uh, because of... 
with the vision statement right yes and all the money coming in yes people just throw money at it then then the, then the investors will say hey i have put 200 million dollars show me the grow grow man grow don't worry about money i'll put more <laughs> so yeah. the entrepreneur says okay sir i'll do it but the point is we never did that we never took extra money than what we yes, did yes exactly we you know, you know we raised as much as we need the reason is because when you build discipline with adequate funds you know and you are building actually a company that is sustainable mm. if you if you build a company with a huge amount of money thrown in there you are actually not building a sustainable company in the long run yes uh and we were talking about uh, the customer uh, inputs and customer experience we changed the topic uh, so yeah if you can share some customer stories and you know yeah. how you take their inputs and how you evaluate sure. so first of all at the end of every trip uh, they have they rate the driver the customer and he also has he can call i mean there is a uh, you know online we have a 24/7 customer service so what happens is that 24/7 people have an issue they can either uh, chat with us you know or talk to us so what it does is allows the customer to tell us what's going on at a given time at the moment to moment then obviously customers rate us on um, play store they rate us on uh, all the apps wherever google and everywhere and we take that input too we look at it and saying and they're on facebook and people you know they they will uh, rate you know so what we do is we listen to customers and then we start saying okay here is something that we need to build for the customer for mm-hmm. example people who are using commute people who commute to work and back before even today uber and ola you can only book one trip at a given time at drive you i can book for the entire month yeah yeah that's that's a feature which is like i think which is not it's an undervalued thing yeah yes it's a bulk what do you call bulk booking yeah i say every morning i have a driver at 7:30 every evening i want a driver at 6 o'clock at, at my office i mean we automatically do that yeah we don't guarantee the same driver but we'll guarantee our service it's weird that other companies uh, didn't pay attention to this feature yeah. yeah yeah and it's been there for last two years by the way we have been working on it a lot of customers use us so also it helps us as a company because i'll say i have advanced booking for the month yes i already know how many trips i already advanced right at the beginning of the month yes so so we will add this came right from the customers so we added tried for example i mentioned a little bit earlier we try to do this uh, driver share where i have a car i take a drive you driver then i can share my car with somebody else honestly we spectacularly failed on that one um, mm. about 2 years ago people didn't really accept that yeah um they were not into, hey i have my car i have my driver why should i share it with you yeah you know, yeah kind of thing. so at some point we will we already have we have built all that stuff at some point we might do that um but from the market told us nah it's not going to work yeah i mean that's how i think startups are learning i mean it's like a huge playground experimenting all the time yeah Yeah. Uh, and learning from that taking inputs yeah. obviously this is how we take input directly from the consumer right and we take a lot of in- inputs from our drivers okay same thing our so if you can just uh, you know share something yeah, yeah. that you improved in your product or based on and for the drivers for example what we have is uh, what we call as advanced booking what they can do is they can open up their fire up their app hmm. they'll say i have all these bookings in hsr kormangla jp nagar you know wherever it is where i am in my area yeah advanced booking i'll say i have a i have a customer who wants at 4:30 and somebody at 4:35 4:40 exactly, yeah. and he will pick it because he has a yeah. regular job he has finished his job at 3 yeah you see so we have nobody does that okay about 90% of our booking at least is already they they accept it the drivers accept it without a broadcast if nobody accepts it then we do a broadcast for the driver in that area and say hey i have a somebody here and then we'll sometimes we have to up the incentive and say look i'm giving you 100 rupees more incentive mm. to take this trip nice okay? yeah. so so we have that so what we call is the, that is a very unique feature for drive you nobody does that yeah and also like uh, it's kind of like uh, decreasing the stress of the drivers itself they don't have to worry about certain things exactly exactly and then you know they we even tell them it 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 will probably last you 4 hours it will last you an hour and a half mm. it will last you you know you go from point a to point b so now he so when you say last uh, the session will last this long so what do you exactly because mean? a customer like you as a customer say i need a driver for 4 hours yeah but then if i don't uh... you don't have to take it okay 4 hours mm. but the probability is you will very close to 4 usually what we say is if i get a driver if i take a driver for 4 hours i usually for 3 and a half hours to 6 mm. hours or whatever that i go 
because I will not otherwise I'll opt for a driver for two hours or a yeah. three hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why not take a driver for less? And because it'll cost me less. Yeah. And also, are there any new features or products that are that you're going to shortly uh, launch, probably in beta phase or something like that? We have a lots of features coming yeah. in. Um, you know, we are experimenting all the time. Hmm. Um, so if you can share some of those. Well, uh, you know, f- from a feature perspective, from a consumer, um, what we are adding feature is to reduce the number of steps to get a driver. So it's all about how quickly I can get a... Yeah, so that's a hassle. hassle. That's always a hassle. hassle. Yeah. Number one, right? So we look at the number of steps. We try to reduce it by a couple of steps by using intelligence. Okay. So, so for example, I have user driver. I have an SUV. Next time I won't ask you a question, do you have an SUV? Oh, okay. Okay. Do you have, you know, because I had to assign the right driver. Okay. okay. So now you may have two cars and they'll say, uh-uh, no, I'm going, I'm going in my sedan today. Okay. So we have to have the option too, right? So mm. think of it. So we want to reduce the, the time it takes from the point you open a fire up the app to get a driver. Yeah. So number one. Number two, you know, young people are very tech savvy. You know, the, you know, and, and most of our people in our company are in their 20s and 30s. Yeah. So they build product for 20s and 30s people. But there are Future older, proof products. Yes. And, but the older people, you know, in their 50s and 60s, either they can't see that well or they don't understand. Yeah. So then we go back and say, okay, what all things can be done for them mm. to get a driver? Because see, a lot of our customers are also older customers. Yes. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, and because they have a car and they want a driver. So we are looking at that. We are looking at how do we make it easier for... The, the, especially in terms of the interface or, yes. the, as you say, the reducing the number of steps to number book of a steps, cab. For example, if I want to have my mom to book a driver. To book a driver, yes. Yeah. I mean, she'll get flustered, right? I mean, you know, if you look at it, for her, it's easy to use um, WhatsApp. Hmm. Okay? But when I... I mean, because it, WhatsApp makes it all so simple. Yes. Right? Think of it that way. Whereas it's harder to use a driver. Oh... So what is it that we can do? Think yeah. of it. And then there is a man, you know, machine interface. There's a possibility like I might book on the phone, but I may be able to see it on the app and the other, vice versa. Yeah. You know, so there are lots of stuff we can do. Yes. Uh, and you talked about the team, you know, you have a young team. Um uh, our audience is very much interested, you know, in getting to know what are the big skills that they need to learn. We have a huge segment of our audience, which are, what is, what is your hiring strategy there? What kind of skills do you look for when you are hiring? Because you said that you have a small team, I mean, not like 100 people, but they're managing a huge system. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so on the tech side, if you are going to um, apply for a job at DriveU, obviously you need to have a tech background. You need mm. to be able to program. Okay. Yes. Now the skills could be, you know, like we talked about, you know, Android programming, iOS programming, and in our back end, being able to figure out how do you, you know, build all, all the systems together, mm. building, you know, build, you know, we are building machine learning and AI in the back end. People with the back, that background is very important to us and who understands what is it that I can infer from the customer and the driver behavior on a, on a daily basis by minute to minute basis. Yes. So that's important from a, from a technical side. On the marketing side, we have a, a very small marketing team, but we optimize the heck out of our, we have probably one of the lowest customer acquisition costs in the industry. I'm very proud of that. That's very important because you get to profitability faster if your acquisition cost of a customer is lower, right? And our driver acquisition cost, customer acquisition cost is very low. So on the marketing side, we have lots of uh, strategies we use to reduce our um, acquisition cost. And we also use a lot of strategies to use to make sure that the customers we have acquired continue to use our platform on a daily basis or a monthly basis. Mm, okay. So that's the second thing. On the operation side, we have people uh, who understand this whole market of uh, you know, dr- yeah. driver experience and so on. Yeah. And uh, what is your vision for the next year? You know, 2020 is coming. Uh, what are the plans for that? The big plan is get to uh, break even profitable company. Yeah. <clears throat> that is, we are already on, on track on that one in 2020. Yeah. Uh, that I call the singularity moment. Singularity, when, yeah. Yeah, it's a singularity moment, right? Yes. Because that's when, and you know what? 
if we are if we do where uh, as per our plan, we are ahead of any of the aggregators. Yes, we are faster than Uber, Ola, anybody. Take anybody in the world. Mm. Okay, we'll be we'll be the first one to be profitable. I'm very proud of the team for doing that because we had an amazing team. Okay, yeah, that's the thing. The second thing is, what we want to do is okay. Where do we go from here, right? So how do we add more value to our customers? Yeah. How do we add more value to our drivers, driver partners? So then we'll add those features and uh, those uh, businesses. And look, we believe this can be a very large company, and and we are operating on that. Uh, you know, I don't want to say what, how big is the value and so on, but I think we'll be way more valuable than what we are today. And, yeah. Uh, and I think we are, we'll focus on that. Third most important thing is we are giving back something to the society. Hmm. You know, our driver partners make good income. Every driver who is on our platform has four or five people sup- uh, he supports in his family. Could be his parents, his kids, and his wife. When a driver comes to me and tells me, sir, I make so much money today that now I'm able to send my daughter to an English medium school. It makes me happy. Yeah. And when the driver says, sir, I went back to my uh, village and I built a small home for my parents from the savings I made with Drive You. Those small things make a big difference rather than just making money. I think it's important for us to see how do we give back to the country where we, I know, where I was, was born and uh, this country has given me so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I think uh, those you. were some great insights, uh, you, the views uh, behind how Drive View is going through this phase. And as you said, the singularity moment is approaching. And, and I'm, from Analytics India Magazine, we wish you all the very best. And thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, Thank you. Yes, sir. Oof.